The steam engines were all stuck in their sheds, waiting for the coal to arrive. Thank goodness you had enough coal to make it back, Gordon. <laughs> but what about Thomas? It's freezing. Oh, it's not fair. I wish I was back at Tidmouth. Uh, achoo! <laughs> Oh, you would be, if you'd done what Sir Topham had told you, Thomas. And now we're stranded out here in the wild. Ah! Oh. Ghastly. If we don't get rescued soon, it'll take till spring to warm up my boiler. Oh, hey, Diesel! <laughs> Since you're being useful, uh, why don't you shunt us back to Tidmouth Sheds? <laughs> I can't be stopping to help you, Thomas. I've got important jobs to do. The big freeze continued all the next day. Be three kings of Oriental, bearing gifts we've traveled too far. <gasps> oh, someone's coming. Maybe they can shunt us back to Tidmouth. Maybe not, then. <sighs> what do you want now, Diesel? That's no way to speak to someone who has just collected the coal for all you silly steamies. <laughs> Diesel, you're a hero! No, I'm not. I'm... <sighs> Thomas, you're back! I heard what happened. It must have been cold on that siding. Oh, it was cold, Percy. Very cold. With coal for their fireboxes, all the steam engines could get back to work again. Express coming through! And the next day, something wonderful happened. It's getting warmer! The big freeze is over! The ice is melting! Oh! Melting. <laughs> and Diesel continued to be a hero. <laughs> At least for a little while. There was once a ferocious two-headed sea serpent. Mildred was its name. <laughs> or was it Monstro? Well, anyway, one of the serpent's heads <gasps> liked to eat ships. <laughs> but the other head liked to eat fish. <laughs> One head wanted one thing, the other head wanted something else. <laughs> and then it became obvious they needed to communicate. I say, old boy, wouldn't it be better if we worked together? Jolly good idea, old sport. <laughs> After you, old chap. <laughs> Your turn, old bean. And from then on, that double-headed sea serpent never went short of his fish and ships. <laughs> Maybe I was being a little too pushy. I guess I could have spoken up. We shouldn't be pulling in opposite directions, Cranky. You're right. Now, what if I just... That, that, that's it, Cranky. <gasps> Up a bit. Left a bit. Almost there. <laughs> there you go, shipmates. Communication. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Oh. Woo. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Salty's story, Cranky and Carly learned about working together and pulling in the same direction.
You take this one, Cranky. Thank you, Carly. There's a ship over there needs unloading. <laughs> no problem, Cranky. Two cranes working in perfect harmony. <laughs> Don't you mean three cranes? <gasps> oh! What? So now you speak? You've been standing there silent all these years, Big Mickey, and you've never said a single word. Well, you've never said a single word to me either. Communication? Ah, uh, just like I was saying. <laughs> Welcome to the team, Big Mickey. You three cranes will be just like those three musketeers. <laughs> 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 oh, my heart! Thomas was on his way back to Napford, but he was very late again. You're going too fast, Thomas. My chassis is shuddering. <gasps> Thomas the Tank Engine. Sir, what, what are you doing here? I know all about your unscheduled stops, Thomas. I've been following you. Oh, I am really sorry, sir. I was trying to help Bertie's passengers, but it got a bit out of control. A bit? <laughs> I'll say. Then you'll be pleased to know I've made other arrangements to help Bertie's passengers. Bertie? He's back. No, Thomas, he isn't. <gasps> Gee, but uh, I thought you'd been turned into a hen house. <laughs> Only for a while. Then I was a mobile vegetable stand. And now I'm back in service. <laughs> and if you don't mind my saying so, we'd all be better off if everyone simply used roads instead of railways. Now, now, Bulgy, don't go getting all anti-rail again, or I might find some chickens who need a place to live. But, um, yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. And now that you don't have to worry about Bertie's passengers, I'll expect you to be bang on time for the rest of the day, Thomas. Yes, sir. Uh, of course, sir. <laughs> Cheerio. You! <laughs> I don't suppose you fancy a race back to Knapford? Well, I certainly do not. <laughs> Down with railways! Down with railways? That sounded like a challenge to me. No, oh, Thomas! He said he didn't want to race! <laughs> oh, no! Get off the line! Oh, shoo! Shoo! Oh! Oh, no! My sheep! My sheep! You can't stay there! Gordon will be along any minute with the express. Yes, they're finally moving. Oh, no. He's almost here. Uncouple me. Philip, what are you doing? I've got to stop Gordon.
Total Engine, whatever are you doing on my line? Broken fence, sheep, all over the line. Phew. Oh, oh, oh. thank you, Philip. 63, 64, 65. No. Oh. oh, Gordon, Philip, what happened? Little Philip here prevented a nasty accident, sir. Is that right, Philip? Well, I, I, I just saw the sheep on the line and... He's being modest, sir. He was extremely brave. Well done, Philip. Oh, yes! Well done, Philip. This little diesel saved my whole flock, <laughs> all 68 of them. 68? Oh, yes, that reminds me. I have good news for you, Philip. I've done some research and discovered why you're number 68. The reason is... Oh, it doesn't really matter anymore, sir. Uh, what? But... I want to be number 68 because I saved 68 sheep and no other engine has ever done that. Mm, very true. And everyone will remember you for that. <laughs> well done, number 68. Sorry I teased you before about your number, Philip. When it comes to being brave, you're number one. Don't be silly, Gordon. Huh? Well, everybody knows I'm number 68, and it's great. <laughs> Thank you.